Hello and welcome to another video. In this one we're going to be talking about testing LRU cache functions. Uh, if you're not familiar with LRU cache, I did a video on it, so I will link that in the description. Uh, but let's jump into it. Okay, so <laughs> I looked for an example in some of the code that I had written, and this example actually comes from pre-commit. Uh, and I'm going to show you the function we're going to implement today. The function is called get default version, and this is part of the API for languages in pre-commit. Uh, and it figures out kind of like how pre-commit is going to install things. And in this case, we're going to implement the one for Ruby. Uh, and the way this function works is if both Ruby and Gem are globally available, so you know you have Ruby and Gem already on your system, the default version is going to default to this string system. Otherwise, it's going to be default. So a very, very simple function to implement. We're going to implement the base function first, then we're going to test it. Then we're going to turn it into an LRU cache because we'll, you know, it's going to be slow if we call this thing repeatedly. And then I'm going to show you, you know, how we're going to adjust our tests to work for the LRU cache version. So let's do it. Okay, so to implement this, we're going to be using shutil. Uh, and shutil has this useful function shutil.which, which tells us whether, you know, an executable exists. So if we go over here. Import shutil shutil dot which you know if we say which Ruby you'll see that I have Ruby installed on my computer, uh, but I don't have you know you know <laughs> something named this installed on my computer. So you can see it returns none when there's no uh, executable there, and so we can basically say here if shutil dot which Ruby and shutil.witch gem. Uh, so if both of those are non-none, so they both they both exist, then we can return system. Otherwise, we're going to return default. And that, that's how I would implement this function. Let's write some tests for this. Usually I would write the test first, but... <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> A little late for that. We already wrote the code. Um, so let's we're gonna we're gonna actually mock out shutil.witch since this kind of can vary based on what machine you're on, and uh, we want to kind of assert that this test works independent of what machine you're working with. Um, so let's first uh, force this so that Ruby and Gem exist, and so we can do that with uh, let's see test both Ruby and Gem exist, and we can do that with the mock.patch.object decorator or not decorator, context manager, mock.patch.object. And I'll probably do another video on mocking, um, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail here, uh, but uh, let's just pretend, <laughs> you can just trust me that this will temporarily make the which function return this string here. Uh, assert get default version is equal to system. So this is the case where you know, both of these executables return some non num value, so we should expect to get the system. And we'll do another test. Test uh, neither Ruby nor gem exist. And we'll do a similar patch here. Uh, but in this case, we're going to return none instead. So this will, this will force which to be falsy in both of these cases, and so we should get default as our answer here. And let's go over here and make a virtual env and test this. Virtual env vm. Activate that. Pip install pytest. And pytest t.py. And you can see that our two tests pass here. So we've we validated that this function works. Cool. Everything is great. Um, but then you you notice, oh, you know, shutil.witch can be kind of slow. Uh, it's not actually that slow, but it does traverse the file system. And in fact, like, your... Um, your terminal will cache values that it looks up similar to how shutil.witch caches. And I'll actually link, the, I'll link the, the bash hash cache video as well, which talks about that in the description. So you might think, oh, okay, well, you know, this is kind of slow, I'm gonna cache this. And so you would import func tools and you would put, you'd slap a func tools dot lru cache max size equals one decorate on this and this cache should be safe because you know <laughs> whether ruby is installed or not shouldn't really change in the context of this process so you can kind of you know if you see ruby once you know you're always gonna have ruby of course it could possibly change but that's so rare and like you probably you probably have something else wrong with your machine if you're doing that 
But anyway, we're gonna add this LRU cache decorator to this function. So now this now this is cached, and so it's only gonna execute this one time in the context of the process. But you'll notice if we go to our tests now, suddenly our second test is failing. And actually, if we would have swapped the order of these two, you'll notice that the other test will fail. So if I, you know, put this one above here, you'll see that um, you know the, the opposite test fails. And this is because this function will always return the value that it returns the first time you run this function. And that brings us to our problem that we're trying to solve today, which is how do I test an LRU cache function? And I'm going to show you two ways to do that. Uh, I'll show you the way that I don't suggest first and then the way that I suggest first. Uh, but you might need to mix and match these depending on how you're calling your function. Um, this first pattern is useful if is still useful and, and I would still use it uh, if you're not directly calling the cache function. So if something else is calling your cache function, this other way is, is more useful. And for that, we're going to make a PyTest fixture and it's going to clear this cache before and after we run our test. And so the way you can do that is by making a pytest.fixture big fixture uh, clear LRU cache. And we're gonna we have to import pytest to do that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a yield fixture. So it's gonna do some setup code before the yield and some setup code after the yield. I haven't done a <laughs> pytest fixture video yet, but I, I will do one on that as well. So you know if if you're here in the future, search that in the description or search that in the playlist. Um, but we're going to clear the cache before we run our test. So yield is when the test runs. So before the yield, we'll do get default version dot clear, or is it? I think it's cache clear. I just forget. Uh, and we're going to do that after as well. So this allows the test to use a completely uncached version of this function. And you'll see, uh, even though we define the fixture, that doesn't cause this to pass. But we can set this fixture to auto use auto use equals true and that will make it automatically run this fixture for every test in this model you may not want that so you can explicitly enable the fixture instead by using pytest.mark uh, use fixtures clear lru cache and so you can manually mark these two tests as using that fixture so if we get rid of auto use up here it should still work cool okay so this is approach one uh, this is the explicitly clear the cache in between each test run. Uh, some of the downsides to this is you have to like track down all of your LRU cache calls. And uh, this cache clear can sometimes make other tests run slower. So like you might still want to cache this result for the rest of your test run. Um, but it does work. And so it's, it's one option you have here. The other option we're going to do, I'm actually going to copy this to another file and uh, we'll do, we'll do our second version in t2.py. The other way, and this is actually the way that pre-commit does this, is uh, instead of clearing the cache, we're just going to bypass the cache entirely when we write our test. And we can do that by accessing the double under wrapped uh, attribute of the function. When you LRU cache something, it gets this special attribute. And this is the inner function. So it's, it's, no, it's no longer accessing the cache. It's just going directly into the um, directly into this function here and completely skipping this. And you can see when we do that now, t2.py, these test paths. Anyway, those are kind of the, the two approaches here. Is that gonna fit on the screen? It does fit on the screen, nice. So you can kind of see like, you know, this is the approach that I suggest if you can use it, which is to bypass the cache using double under wrapped. Otherwise, you can use cache clear before and after. Hopefully this was helpful. Uh, if you guys have additional stuff you want to see, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.